I'm Patrick, 32 years old, and for the last five years, I thought I found the love of my life in my fiancé, Melody, who's 30. We met at my best friend's wedding back in 2018. I was the best man, and she was one of the bridesmaids. From the moment we started talking at the rehearsal dinner, we connected instantly. Melody seemed like everything I'd ever wanted in a partner. She was smart, funny, and had her life together. It felt like I'd found my soulmate. I grew up in a small town with traditional values. My parents have been married for 40 years, and their relationship has always been a model for what I wanted in my own life, commitment, trust, and unconditional love. Though I had a few relationships in college, none were particularly serious. After I graduated, I focused on building my career as an accountant and didn't date much, waiting for someone who felt right. When Melody and I started dating, she told me she had only been in two serious relationships before me. The first was with a high school boyfriend, which lasted a year before they broke up when she went to college. The second relationship was with a guy she dated for two years in college, but they grew apart after graduation. Melody presented herself as someone who didn't believe in casual dating, and I admired that about her. Her values seemed to align with mine. Melody is a marketing executive for a big tech company. She's always been career-focused and ambitious, which is something I've respected from the beginning. We bonded over our work ethic and our shared desire to build a stable, successful future together. Things were great between us for the first few years. After a year of dating, we moved in together, adopted a golden retriever named Max, and started talking about marriage. Last year... During a trip to Hawaii, I proposed, and she said yes. We began planning our wedding, set for next summer. However, about six months ago, I started noticing some changes in Melody's behavior. She became very protective of her phone, always keeping it face down, and taking it with her everywhere, even to the bathroom. If I walked into the room while she was texting, she'd quickly put her phone away. At first, I tried to brush it off, thinking I didn't want to be the kind of person who snoops. I've never been a jealous guy, but her secrecy made me uncomfortable. Things came to a head last month when we attended a college reunion for Melody. I had never met most of her college friends before, as she had told me she lost touch with them after graduation. She had always been somewhat vague about her time in college, saying she focused on her studies and didn't socialize much. Melody seemed nervous about attending the reunion, but I encouraged her to reconnect with her old friends. During the party, I ended up talking with one of her old classmates, Nash. He had been drinking and started reminiscing about their college days. That's when he let slip something that shook me to my core. He mentioned that Melody had been the life of the party back in school and that she'd hooked up with a lot of guys in their dorm during her freshman year. He even brought up a time she streaked across the quad during finals week. I was stunned. This didn't sound like the melody I knew. Nash must have realized he said too much because he quickly tried to change the subject, but the damage was done. I didn't confront Melody right away, but I couldn't get what Nash said out of my mind. His description of her college years didn't match up with what Melody had always told me. I started paying more attention to her behavior and noticed more inconsistencies. She'd mentioned people I'd never heard of before and then brush off my questions when I asked who they were. She'd get defensive whenever I brought up her past, and her stories didn't always add up. Last week, I finally reached a breaking point. Melody had gone out with some friends, so I decided to look through her old laptop. I know snooping isn't the right thing to do, but I felt like I had no other choice. What I found devastated me. There were hundreds of photos from her college years. Photos of her partying, drinking, and in compromising positions with different guys. These weren't just casual friends. The messages and emails I found confirmed that Melody had been in far more relationships than the two she had told me about. There were at least five guys she had called her boyfriend at various points in time. The worst part was finding recent messages between Melody and an ex-boyfriend, Chris. The messages weren't explicitly sexual, but they were definitely flirtatious and inappropriate for someone who was engaged. They had inside jokes I didn't understand and references to memories they shared. At one point, Chris asked if she ever thought about the good old days 
and Melody replied with a winking emoji. I confronted Melody when she got home. At first, she denied everything, saying the photos were just harmless fun and the messages were taken out of context. But when I showed her the evidence, she broke down and admitted she lied about her past. She said she was ashamed of her wild years and didn't think I'd want to be with her if I knew the truth. As for the messages with Chris, she claimed they were just harmless flirting and nothing physical had happened. She insisted that Chris was going through a rough patch and she was just trying to be supportive. Melody begged me to forgive her and promised to cut off all contact with Chris. Now I'm completely lost. I love Melody, or at least I thought I did. But after everything that's happened, I don't know if I can trust her anymore. Our wedding is six months away, and I'm questioning everything. Part of me wonders if I'm overreacting. Maybe her past doesn't matter as much as who she is now. But another part of me feels utterly betrayed. If she's lied about this, what else might she be hiding? I've always looked up to my parents' relationship, and I don't know if Melody and I can ever have that same level of trust. I haven't told anyone, friends or family, about this because I'm embarrassed. I don't want people to think badly of Melody, especially if we try to work things out, but I feel like I'm carrying this heavy secret alone. Has anyone else been in a similar situation? Is it possible to rebuild trust after something like this? Or am I just setting myself up for more heartbreak if I try to forgive her? A lot has happened over the past two weeks, and I want to take a moment to express my gratitude for all the advice and support I've received. It's really given me some much-needed perspective on the situation. After carefully considering everything, I made the difficult decision to postpone the wedding indefinitely. I felt that I needed more time to process what had happened and figure out whether I could ever trust Melody again. When I told her about my decision, she was understandably upset, but she said she understood. We ended up having a long, emotional conversation, during which Melody opened up more about her past. She revealed that she had struggled with low self-esteem during her college years. At that time, she used partying and casual relationships as a way to feel validated. Melody explained that after college, she had been in therapy for several years to work through these issues, which is part of the reason why she hadn't wanted to talk about that period of her life with me earlier. I appreciate her honesty, even though it was painful to hear. I also made it clear to Melody that I needed her to go back to individual counseling, specifically to address her issues with honesty and her apparent need for male attention. She agreed to this, and I took it as a positive sign that she was willing to work on herself. Additionally, we both started attending couples counseling in an effort to rebuild the trust in our relationship. For a little while, things seemed to be improving. Melody became more transparent about her daily activities. She shared her phone passwords with me and made a point of letting me know where she was going at all times. She also deleted Chris's phone number and showed me that she had blocked him on all social media platforms. In our couple's counseling sessions, we were having productive conversations, and I started to feel hopeful that maybe we could work through this after all. However, a few days ago, things took a sharp turn for the worse. I was still staying at our apartment, but I had been sleeping in the guest room. One night, I came home from work earlier than usual and heard voices coming from our bedroom. As I approached quietly, I could hear Melody giggling along with a man's voice. My heart sank. I burst into the room and found Melody in bed with none other than Chris, the ex-boyfriend she had been messaging before. They were both partially undressed. Melody looked absolutely shocked and immediately started crying, insisting that it wasn't what it looked like. Chris quickly gathered his clothes and mumbled a rushed apology as he passed me on his way out. I was so furious that I couldn't even speak. I simply packed a bag and left to stay with my brother. Since then, Melody has been calling and texting me nonstop, begging for another chance. She claims it was a moment of weakness and says she deeply regrets what happened. According to her, Chris had reached out to her, saying that he was struggling with suicidal thoughts, and she invited him over to talk. She said that one thing led to another, and they ended up where I found them. I'm devastated. I really thought that we might be able to work through her lying, but this feels like the final straw. 
All the progress we had made in counseling now seems meaningless. I've come to the decision that I can no longer continue this relationship. I'm meeting with a lawyer next week to discuss how to handle our shared assets and figure out what to do about the apartment. It's going to be messy, but I know this is the right choice for me. One of the hardest parts of this process has been telling our families. My parents were disappointed but supportive. They had never fully warmed up to Melody and had always sensed something was off about her, though they kept their opinions to themselves out of respect for me. On the other hand, Melody's parents were shocked by the news. They've been calling me, trying to convince me to give her another chance. They say that Melody has always struggled with commitment and just needs more time to mature. In addition to all of this, I've had to cancel our wedding plans. Luckily, we hadn't paid too many non-refundable deposits, but it has still been embarrassing to reach out to all our friends and explain that the wedding is off. Most people have been understanding, though some of Melody's friends have accused me of overreacting and not being forgiving enough. One of the hardest things to deal with is figuring out what to do about our dog, Max. We both love him so much, and the thought of not seeing him every day breaks my heart. For now, Max is staying with me at my brother's place, but I know that eventually we'll have to come up with some kind of custody arrangement. I'm heartbroken, but I'm trying to stay strong. I keep telling myself that it's better to find out the truth now rather than after we were married or had children. Still, it's incredibly hard to let go of the future I thought we were going to have together. After everything that has happened, I decided to dig a little deeper into Melody's past. I reached out to some of her old friends and ex-boyfriends to get a better understanding of her previous relationships. What I learned was shocking. It turns out that Melody has a long history of infidelity. Several of her exes shared stories that were disturbingly similar to mine. They told me about finding inappropriate messages on her phone or catching her in compromising situations. One ex even revealed that she had cheated on him with multiple men throughout their two-year relationship. The most surprising information came from her college roommate, Lisa. She told me that Melody had been engaged once before, during their senior year of college. Apparently, after learning that Melody had cheated on her fiancé with one of his close friends, he decided to call off their wedding, which was just a month away. Discovering this part of Melody's past left him shocked, especially since she had hidden it from him for so long. This revelation solidified his decision to end their relationship for good, as it became clear that Melody's issues went far beyond merely lying about her past. The man realized that he had dodged a bullet by learning the truth before they were married, rather than afterward. To cope with the situation, he began seeing a therapist to help him process the betrayal. The therapy sessions were invaluable in helping him rebuild his trust in others and identify red flags in future relationships. His therapist helped him understand that Melody's behavior was not a reflection of his own worth, but was rooted in her own unresolved issues. Despite Melody's repeated attempts to reach out to him with long emails apologizing and claiming she had changed, he remained firm in his decision to cut ties. She explained that she had started intensive therapy and joined a support group for people struggling with infidelity. While a part of him wanted to believe her, he knew he couldn't risk being hurt again. Some mutual friends informed him that Melody had been spreading rumors that he was the one who had cheated, which he found frustrating but unsurprising given her history of dishonesty. However, he chose not to engage with these rumors, reasoning that the people who truly mattered to him knew the truth and he didn't want to waste energy defending himself against lies. Instead, he focused on his own healing. He threw himself into his work, reconnected with old friends, and even picked up new hobbies. One of the things he had always wanted to do was learn guitar, something he had never made time for while he was with Melody. Now, free from the relationship, he had started taking lessons and found it fulfilling. Though it wasn't easy, he knew he was better off without someone who could lie and cheat so easily. His family had also been a great support system during this difficult time. His parents called him regularly to check in, and his brother let him stay at his place whenever he needed it. This whole experience reminded him how important family was and made him grateful for the strong support system he Three had. Three months after his last update, he was pleased to report that he was doing much better. 
While the pain of the breakup hadn't completely disappeared, it wasn't as raw as it had been before. He continued with therapy, which had been incredibly helpful in working through his trust issues and processing his emotions. He had also made some positive changes in his life. He received a promotion at work, which not only distracted him from the drama, but also boosted his confidence. The new role involved more responsibilities and travel, and he enjoyed having something positive to focus on. In addition to his work, he had started volunteering at a local animal shelter on weekends, which he found fulfilling. Working with the dogs reminded him of his own dog, Max, and helped ease the pain of only seeing Max every other week. He even considered adopting a cat for companionship. As for Melody, he had not had any direct contact with her in months. However, through mutual friends, he learned that she had moved to a different city for a new job. He was relieved to have physical distance between them, which made it easier for him to move on. He hoped the change of scenery would help her address her issues and become a better person. Unexpectedly, he had become closer friends with Nash, the friend from Melody's college reunion who initially told him about her past. Nash reached out to apologize for his part in the situation, and they had gone out for drinks a few times. Talking with Nash, who understood the full scope of what had happened, was helpful. Nash also shared more stories from their college days, which made him realize that Melody's issues had been present long before he met her. He had also started dating again, though he was taking things slowly. He had gone on a few casual dates, but wasn't rushing into anything serious. He was upfront with potential partners about his past experience and what he was looking for in a relationship. While it was scary to be vulnerable again, he was hopeful that he would eventually find someone who valued honesty as much as he did. His relationship with his family had also grown stronger throughout this experience. He spent more time with his parents, helping out around the house, and simply enjoying their company. Their unwavering support had been a rock for him during this ordeal, and it made him appreciate them even more. Looking back, he was grateful that he found out about Melody's true nature before they got married. Although the experience was painful, he learned a lot about himself and what he wanted in a partner. He knew that he wouldn't settle for anything less than complete honesty and trust in a future relationship. While he still had moments of sadness and anger, especially when reminded of Melody or their time together, those feelings were becoming less frequent and less intense. He was starting to feel excited about the future again, something he hadn't thought possible just a few months ago. In closing, he thanked everyone for their support throughout this journey. Their advice and kind words had been a huge help, and while he wouldn't be posting any more updates, he wanted them to know that he was doing well and looking forward to whatever the future held.